Semapagi Natsa Du Duaifa, Du Winsa, Bua Wuteka, Suwat Sabua Wukeka, Bua Numana. One day, a dark woman with a sword will come on a white mule. When the woman comes on the white mule, it will be the end of the time of the Comanche people. There will be wars and pestilence, and our people will perish. And you, my son, must not turn your back to the woman on the white mule. Your death will come only when your great hump is pierced. Do not turn your back on her. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Major. What do you see, Gus? Look at that, Woodrow. Maddie's carrying an old snapping turtle as if it was a basket of peaches. Say if one of them devils bites you, don't turn loose till it thunders. It's no wonder they call Maddie the Great Western. You ever seen a sight like that, Woodrow? A whore carrying a snapping turtle. No, I doubt anybody else has either. I think we should uh, talk to the major. Uh, major, major, Mr. Coleman. Um, major. When is payday? Payday? You wish to be paid out here. Tell me, what would you buy if I paid you? <clears throat> Matty, see, I, I order for seven or eight pokes already. Well, that's your problem, Mr. Coleman. Mail coaches do not frequent these parts. I never frequented them either till now. I'm scared she's gonna set that turtle on us. You ain't the only one with unpaid bills. What do you think she means to do with it? Don't know and don't care. What do you mean you don't care? I thought you liked Maddie. I did, till last night. Tried to get me a poke on credit, she wouldn't give it to me. A whore that won't give credit, deserves to get pecked by a snapping turtle. Well, good morning, Miss Roberts. You're a new pet. Nope. I just felt like throwing a snapping turtle at two cheap sons of bitches. <laughs> Scout, 
bullets are back. Major! Bigfoot Wallace and Shadrack are back. Uh, good. Maybe they can enlighten us about all that screaming that kept me awake all night. Turtle for breakfast. <laughs> now, that's fine. Who caught him? Why, the great Western. Who else? You best wrap up, Matty. I like giving my customers a free look. I'm gonna make them feel prosperous. Storm's coming. You'll have icicles hanging off your milkers. You don't get dressed, honey. I haven't heard any more noise from across the river, Mr. Wallace. I suppose that Mexican died. And we found his remains. He was tortured pretty good before he died. Yeah, Comanches caught him. Three of them looked like. You sure it was Comanches, Mr. Wallace? Oh, it was Comanches, all right. This here's a great Comanche war trail we're camped on. That full moon last night? It's what they call a Comanche moon. And when it shines, they raid. Snatch a few Mexican young'uns to sell or keep for slaves. I figure it was Buffalo Hump's boys. Caught that Mexican. Buffalo Hump? Well, I surely hope that scoundrel is not in this vicinity. That Mexican didn't have no way to kill itself. Didn't have no gun. No, but he had a knife. A knife is adequate, if you know where to cut. Where would you cut? You cut the juggler. Right here. And you could do it with a broken bottle. Or even poke a big mesquite thorn in there, if that's all you got available. You want to cut two or three times, though. That way, you bleed to death before they get a chance to do much torture. Mate, I'll shoot myself in the head if I got time. Well, that can go wrong, too. Don't be sticking no gun in your mouth unless it's a shotgun. Why not? It's hard to miss your head with a gun in your mouth. No, it ain't. That bullet could ricochet off a tooth. Come out your ear. You'd still be healthy enough for them to torture for a week. Shove the barrel of a gun up against an eyeball and pull. Now that's sure. Then if some squaw comes along and chews off your privates, you won't know the difference. Mercy. My, this is a cheery conversation. Some of these boys are inexperienced, Major. If they don't know the proper way to finish themselves. Uh, they could wind up prisoners of the Comanche someday. That'd be real bad. The Comanche can keep a captive alive three or four days while they have their fun with them. Back in the Tidewater, Mr. Wallace, we usually refrain from discussing suicide methods over breakfast. They got no cartoon on people like that. and that happens. What's worse than having your privates chewed off? Oh, having them pull out the end of your gut, tie it to a dog, and then chase that dog around the camp for a while until there's about 50 foot of your gut strung out for the brats to eat. Oh, God. To, to eat? Imagine brats eat gut like white brats eat candy. Well. I'm certainly glad I wasn't very hungry this morning. Talk like this might unsettle a delicate stomach. Gentlemen. <clears throat> or they might run a stick up your fundament, set it on fire. That way your guts done be cooked when they pull them out. What's a fundament? It's a hole in your body. It ain't your nose or your mouth or either one of your ears. Figure it out. I aim to keep my own guts inside me if nobody minds.
There's a cleaver, Miss Maddie. Why would you keep a thing like that? Why would he keep a smelly old turtle's head? Why would a squaw chew off your privates? That's a better question. There's two riders coming from the west. I think they're Americans, but ain't sure. Americans, Zeke, but they don't deserve to be. John Kirker and Jim Glant, scalp hunters. We've seen their tracks in Mexico. Scalp hunters. It's a gory trade. Pays good, though. $50 a scalp, I hear. Like you've been busy. That's right. We put in a good day's work. Caught eight Comanches by a water hole. Kill them all. I killed three and John killed the rest. Two men killed eight Comanches? Now that's active. Look at that. John. Hey, hey! Get away from them scalps. That's government property now. Now, be neighborly, John. We're just looking. Get away from them scalps. I'll say it. This ain't Indian hair, Major. It's Mexican hair, and most of it's young hair. Young hair? children's hair. These skunks probably had supper with some little Mexican family, then wiped them out. Mm. That's a lie. Here's Comanche hair, Major. We took it legal. Eight Comanches, Jim? Yep. Yeah, eight. Yeah, eight Comanches could string you two out from here to Santa Fe. Indians grease their hair, Major. There ain't a bit of grease in his hair. That's government property you're handling. Now get away. I say we hang these low dogs. All they've been doing is killing Mexicans. We're out here to scout a road from San Antonio to El Paso, Mr. Wallace, and we will encounter our share of wild Indians. I don't approve of the scalp trade myself, but it is legal whether we like it or not. Will you men finish your coffee and leave. You're not welcome here.
Chan. Here's some coffee. I didn't put no molasses in it. I know you like it strong. Thank you, Matilda. It's kind of you. She's scared. You boys better go back and wait by the fire. I gotta talk to her. Moan. Analum. Ah, Timothy Namina. Melaki. Está bien. No tenga miedo. No tenga miedo. Está bien. Ven aquí. ¿Tú tienes hombre? Vaya a comer. Vaya a comer. Y te tu y vitsisi, Tuki pama tu da casu me me kehana equa kate. Lord of mercy. Look at that boy. That boy's starving to death. What were they doing out there? Hi. What'd she say? She's scared. Afraid Buffalo Hump's gonna come notch her nose. Notch her nose? Why? She's one of his wives, and she misbehaved. Now she's afraid he's gonna come and cut her nose. And he'll do it, too. He's already cut that young'un's tongue out for stealing food. So Buffalo Hump's out there. Uh, he might be raiding in Mexico. Or he might be out there watching us. Buffalo Hump's the meanest Comanche on the plains. They say he's taken a thousand captives out of Mexico. All right. Behooves us to mount a solid guard. Mr. McRae, Mr. Call. You take the first watch. You stay awake, too. You nap, you're liable to wake up without no hair. Can't you keep still? The Major expects us to be alert. I doubt there's any engines out there. If he caught you drinking on guard, he'd shoot you. We're lucky the Major even let us be Texas Rangers. But how did he catch me? He'd have to sneak up on me. And I'd have to be a whole lot drunker than this not to notice some fat man sneaking up on me. You're cracked. Now you're getting drunk. You're too darn good to live with, Woodrow. Where'd you get that whiskey, anyways? Down in Carthage, left it laying out by the saddle. Not only are you a drunk, you're a thief. I should have picked another partner, by God. I shut up, let's want a licking. You're always criticizing. Like I said, we're lucky to be Texas Rangers. We ought to try and do it right. I'm doing it well enough. What else is there to do except hide behind this darn rock? I hope it rains. 
At least it'll wash off this darn sand. <laughs> They say Bigfoot's been all the way to China. They say he knows every creek in Texas, whether it's boggy or not. He's a first-rate Indian killer besides. Myself, I'd rather know every hole. They say Indians can imitate any sound. They say they can fool you into thinking they're a wolf or a coyote. Now or cricket. I doubt I command you to pretend to be a cricket. Nope. That's Indian. They're talking. They're talking an animal. Let's go kill us one. We killed three or four. Major raise our wages. I ain't going. That ain't what we're supposed to do. Well, I doubt he's a real major anyway. Even if he ain't a major, he gave us a job. We're earning $30 a month. Long Bill says we'll get all the Indian fighting we want before we get back to the settlements. Yeah. I'm going exploring. I hear there are gold mines in this part of the country. Think all the whores I could buy if I had a gold mine. I could buy me a whorehouse. <laughs> Ain't you coming? I was told to stand guard, not to go prospecting. I got a job to do. I aim to do it. Yeah, well, do mine too while you're at it. You go off and get captured, Major won't like it one little bit, and neither will you. You remember how that Mexican screamed? Cimarron River, they'll know right where to find us. There wasn't but one Indian. He was huge. 
This is Buffalo Hump's lens. Got his markings. You saw Buffalo Hump? Well, I seen him too. He came in flashing lights. He was just sitting there on a blanket. With his eyes. Where'd all this blood come from? From you. Lucky it ain't your lifeblood. I seen the Indian twice in the lightning flashes. One time he was throwing that lance. He was alone. Why would the man be sitting out there in a blanket all alone? Where's he going? Shadrach goes where he pleases. Always has. <laughs> that Indian's out there. Shad ain't scared of nothing. Burn, Maddie. Was that Indian as big as they say he is? He was big, Johnny. Out. He's a major, or even a soldier. I expect he stole that uniform. If we weren't along, he couldn't find El Paso if he had six months. Shit, I swear those are mountain goats up there on that ridge. Those are mountain goats. I see them. You see them, Woodrow? All I see is a hill. That looks like goats to me. Meet for the pot. Let's go, Good boys. again. Ever since you drank that alky water, you can't <laughs> hardly keep your pants up. <laughs> I guess you boys just think you're all just gonna fly right up that hill. Looks like he's stuck right in the bone. It just fell out the sky. I still ain't seen no Indians. Of course not. They ain't fools like us. They don't stand around out in the open. Yeah. Good God, he's done killed somebody else. Where's your guys? I don't see your Josh anywhere. He's right here when we stop. Well, he ain't here now. He went over to that sage to answer the call of nature. Josh, get on out of there, boy. I'm his partner. I gotta go help him. Get out, get out, boy. Get back, get out, get Curse that boy. They'll take him for sure. Weird, 
that they got him now, the young fool. <laughs> Wonder who shot his horse. Kicky Wolf, he's our marksman. <laughs> about killing himself. Chickens and buffalo arms cutting our heads off. Help me! I can't see! I can't see! Zeke will have to keep his hat on in the winter, I expect. If he lives. Help me! Help me! Maddie! Come hey, back! Maddie, this ain't no boulevard! I'm gonna go get Zeke. He ain't dead, he's scalped. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm going to take you back to camp. Help me look for my pistol so I can do what Bigfoot said. Don't be talking that way. Don't be talking that way. You ain't dying. You just got your head skinned. Come on now. Come on. Sam's a good doc, and he'll make a poultice for you. Now get up. Get on up here. My head's on fire, man. See? You got to be still. Look, folks live through scalpins, all right? We're going back to camp. No, I need my pistol. He might come back. That big one. He might come back. Oh, Lord, he's bloody. People don't die being bloody, Carl. Maybe Sam can patch him up. God Almighty. <laughs> All right. It's your time now. Let's so get at it. Might hurt a little bit, huh? All right. You ready? All right. One, two, three. He's coming, Johnny. That'll make a good bandage and give him a hat. My flies will be all over that wound. Woodrow, look. I'm glad there weren't more of them. If there was, I doubt we could whip them. We can't whip them. Well, if it was live or die, I expect we could. If it was live or die, we'd die. Any three of them could finish us. That buffalo man, he could do it all by himself if he took a notion. I wish I had a cannon. They'd leave us alone if we were better armed. We are better armed. That big man killed Josh with an arrow, scalped Zeke with a knife. If they'd have had more rifles, they'd have killed us all. I ain't never seen no people like them Comanches. I didn't know what wild Indians was like.
Zeke's done for himself. Oh, Zeke. Oh, God, I wish you hadn't done that. Zeke and Josh was pards. I don't guess they'll mind bunking together in the hereafter. Anybody who knows a good scripture, let them say it. We gotta skedaddle. I don't fancy another fight with Buffalo, huh? But there, there's that scripture about them green pastures. So say it then, Bill. Well, there's them green pastures. That's all I can recall. Leadeth me beside the still waters. I think that's what Bill's talking about. I remember that. Still waters. Well, this ain't no green pasture. Amen. That's good enough. Let's go while we still got our hair. Why is that Comanche woman? I guess they took the boy. Good Lord, they done notched her nose. I wonder why folks want to say scriptures when they buried somebody. They're dead. They can't hear no holy talk. Well, this is custom. Folks get to thinking about heaven when somebody dies. I'm glad I seen them wild Indians. Why well, ain't? Josh and Zeke are dead. And I nearly was. As soon as I get to Austin, I'm gonna buy a better gun. Still glad I seen them Comanches. Change my mind. Let's go looking for a horse. I thought you had a toothache, Bill. Man's teeth belongs in his head. That's my opinion. Myself, I can't afford a dentist or a tour. I can't even afford to get drunk unless I steal some whiskey. I'll buy you the whiskey. up an expedition to take Santa Fe from the Mexicans. The Texas Rangers are welcome to go. Where is Santa Fe? Got Long Bill, Blackie Slidell, Johnny Carthage, Button Brothers. They're all ready to leave. And Matilda's going too. You didn't answer my question. Where is Santa Fe? Well, it's out where we went the first time. Only further. If it's further than we went the first time, we'll never get there. They mean to annex Nuevo Mexico and make it part of the Texas Republic. They say Caleb Cobb's leading the troop. Well, now everybody's heard of Caleb Cobb. No, everybody ain't, because I ain't. Anyway, Bigfoot and Chad are joining up. We need to join up ourselves. They say there's gold and silver piles everywhere in Santa Fe. They say there's enough gold to fill up two churches. Well. Why would the Mexicans just want to give us two churches full of gold? Don't sound like no Mexicans I've met. You are too darn contrary, Woodrow. 
I've never met a person that's as apt to take the opposite view than you. Well, I guess I spent too much time with mules. You asked too many darn questions. And you ain't come up with a single answer. I don't think you know anything. You just heard some wild talk, now you want to go fight. <laughs> what about Buffalo Hump? If Santa Fe's out in his direction, he'll find us, he'll kill us. Some of the army's coming along on the expedition. Buffalo Hump has an army, too. If he can find 10 warriors to ride with him, then he's got an army. Besides, he lives there. What makes you think we can whip the Mexicans even if we do get there? What makes you think we can't, you fool? Well, we didn't whip them at the Alamo. Damn it, we drove them about wore out from arguing with them. I have never met a person that's as stubborn as you. Santa Fe or bust. Well, I didn't expect you'd want to go fight Mexicans, Matty. You become a ranger, too? I'm needing to get to California before I'm old, Woodrow. I hear there's roads to the west up around Santa Fe. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all shut up! I think my skull broke. Are you with us, Woodrow? Well, you boys want me, I guess I'll join up. Let's get to joining. Sign up, gentlemen. This is your last chance. Sign up now or you'll regret it. The great Texas Santa Fe expedition is ready to leave. This here's a free man's army. All we furnish is the muskets, the ammunition, and the grub. Only we don't call it an army. Yeah, I wouldn't call it an army either. These fellas are specimens of your soldiers. They're mostly card sharks and barbers. We plan for trading and such, but what do you plan to do for fighting men once you tell the Mexicans we're taking over Santa Fe? That ain't your worry. That's ours. No, it's ours. We're gonna take our scalps over in that direction. Captain Billy Faulkner is such a firebrand, I expect he can handle the entire Mexican army all by himself. Well, if he's such a scrapper, maybe he can handle Buffalo Hump. Him and his boys cooked two mule skinners to death not ten miles from here. Why, the ugly rascal. I'll get up a party and go after them. You boys can come, if you're game. Whoa, Billy. Now, you can go chase after violent Comanches if you want to, but you ain't taking one of my new pistols. That buffalo hump fella, he just might get the best of you. Then I'd be out of gun. Wouldn't I? What? Wouldn't I? Well, I thought one of these was mine. It ain't. Take these men over to Quartermaster Brignoli. Get them outfitted. This Enterprise sets sail just as soon as General Lloyd arrives. Phil Lloyd? <laughs> He's going? That's right. Well, I scouted for him once. He's been drunk every day for the last 20 years. General Lloyd couldn't find Mexico if you tied him to a horse and pointed him south. Man can't even ride. Well, if he can't ride, we'll put him in a wagon. Right. Raise the main sail, lower the damper. Right. This way, gentlemen. Well, we got Phil Lloyd, a talking bird, and a dentist. Think we can take New Mexico? Well, it was me with hang the general, eat the bird, keep the dentist. That is where it come in useful up in the ball. Yeah, the bird might be tasty. Well, speak of the devil. Here's the general now. Drunk as a lord. This way. Peck. A 
bonnet. It's a bonnet, I suppose. Oh, no, Mrs. Peck. That's a very becoming bonnet. <laughs> if you say so, Clara. Thank you, ma'am. Good day, Dr. Morris. Good day, Miss Forsythe. Here are your cigars. My father tended to them personally. Well, your pa tended to them too well, Clara. Never buy a cigar till you smell it. It's very good advice. But I won't take it. I don't fancy cigars. Dispose of this, please, sir. Do what, ma'am? Dispose of this. I can see you're tall, but I don't know if you're useful. <laughs> I'm Clara. Who are you? Augustus McCrae. Augustus. Did you hear that, Mr. Brognoli? He's Roman, like you. I don't think so, Miss Forsyth. He's just a young rascal from Tennessee. <laughs> What's that in his hand? Has he been stealing from you? No, it's just some wrapping I asked him to dispose of. He ain't done it yet, so I guess he's a laggard. Better hurry, McCrae. I am to keep this piece of paper forever. Keep it forever? That scrap? When you have important soldiering to do? I'm keeping it because you gave it to me. Gus! Don't you want to pick a gun? Now, why don't you pick one out for me, Woodrow? I expect they're all alike. We're gonna buy horses. Don't you want to pick your own mount? Hello. Are you a Roman, too, sir? Oh, no, no. This here is Woodrow Call. He's just a plain Texan. Woodrow, won't you uh, grab me a musket as you leave? Why? I believe I've smitten Mr. McCrae. Doubt I could smite you, though, Mr. Carl. <laughs> Not unless I had a club. <laughs> hey, you. Go along now. Your friend Corporal Carl is waiting for you. Well, no, no. He's not a corporal. He's just a plain Texan Ranger like me. He's more enterprising than you, though. I bet he makes corporal any day now. Put these on that table, please. Hello, Paul. This is Augustus McCrae from Tennessee. He's a Texas Ranger, but seems to have time to spare, so I put him to work. I see. She's brash, ain't she? Yeah, you don't have to wait for an opinion when Miss Claire's around. She'll give you one before you can catch your breath. I ought to go look at those horses. Many thanks for the visit. Was it a visit? Well, it seemed like one to me. The door ain't locked. Come back and pitch in with the unpacking, Mr. McCrae, if you have the time. If he doesn't have the time, I expect he'll make it. <laughs> Here, I hope this one suits you. Keep it. I ain't going. What? You don't want to go on the expedition? I'd rather marry that girl. You ain't known her but <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah, well, 10 minutes is enough. He's a cutter, ain't he? Meets the girl, next thing you know, he wants to go for the preacher. You ought to visit the Hoor house. It'll <laughs> clear your head. Howdy, Sam. Howdy. <laughs> hey, 
mister. Eden. I'll go ahead and put these on outside. That way you won't lose no time. Oh, you can just sit there on the bed and put them on. You ain't been here that long. I don't see you before we leave. Goodbye, Maggie. Well, goodbye, Woodrow. opinion is she lively I got no opinion You ought to be cleaning your weapon. It's brand new. You need to clean the grease out of the barrel. General Lloyd's here. We're leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Y'all may be leaving. I ain't. Hell, you signed up right there in front of Caleb Cobb. You try to back out now, he'll hang you for desertion. Hang you till crows peck out your eyeballs. Believe I've heard enough of this gloom talk. I'm gonna go take a walk down by the river. Guess I'll walk with you a ways. I didn't request your company that I recall. It's a free country. I guess I can walk by the river if I want to. Don't touch it. You don't understand nothing about it, Woodrow. She ain't the marrying kind. You ain't hardly even the whoring kind. We ain't going away forever. You're determined to marry her. Why can't you wait till we get back from Santa Fe? Because she's flirting. Now, she tried to flirt with you, you're too dumb to notice. What if she marries for some fool while we're gone? Well, I'd be heartbroken for her. Somebody's fishing. What kind of fool fish at night? Fish can't see the bait. Well, fish don't need to see. It can smell. Gus! Gus, you all right? Where is everybody? Off Hurin. I didn't have no cash, so I stayed to watch the camp. Well, Gus just fell off a bluff down by the river. Well, come on, Johnny. Gus might be dead. Walk, Johnny. Indians can swim. Who can swim? Indians. That big and with the hunt might be right out there in the water. They swim under the water and grab folks right out the boat. Well, we ain't in a boat. We're on the shore. Did you hit him? Hit who? Did you hit the Indian you shot at? Who shot? You shot? You're so drunk you can't I remember shooting shot. your own gun. I shot? What joke? I didn't shoot Don't nobody. Hey there, do you listen here, Mr. Rascal? If I see an Indian, I will shoot him. There you are. 
Johnny shot at somebody. He can't remember who. I hope it ain't that buffalo, huh? I hurt my ankle. I don't expect I could outrun him tonight. Johnny, who did you shoot at? Matilda at that big turtle. Uh, now I got two of you down. If this ain't a darn nuisance. Let's get on to camp if you can hobble. I'll come back for Johnny later. Hope oh, that girl's in that store tomorrow. Well, go see her. Maybe she'll sell you a crutch. Again, if I lose my camp. So it's you and not Mr. McRae. I guess he ain't as smitten as I thought. He meant to be here at dawn, but he fell, hurt his ankle. Just like a man. It's a broken. I expect he done it dancing with a senorita. No, it was dark. He fell off a bluff. I thought some liniment might help. It might if I rubbed it on him myself. <laughs> if I could just buy some and take it to him, he could do it himself. <laughs> you know nothing of medicine, sir. Tell Mr. McRae I consider it very careless of him to go falling off a bluff. When I smite a man, I expect more careful behavior. Welcome. I suppose you told her I was drunk. You mean to marry her yourself, don't you? Marry her? I don't even know the woman's name. Pshha! <laughs> and don't take long to learn the name. You mean to marry her and not know it. You must have broke your brain when you took that fall. I don't intend to marry nobody! I'm off to Santa Fe! Let's go, boys! Buffalo hunt burned out a farm this side of Bathroom. We're going after him. Johnny, who's gonna pack up the wagon? Lead us up the trail. The rest of you pack it up. Let's go. Come on. This is a parcel of stuff to pack up. Gus won't be no help. He's a cripple. Oh, hush you yet. Be, be sure to bring me my long john. I don't know what I did to rile you, but I hope to see you up the trail if I live. I'm sorry I swung at you, Woodrow. I was drunk. Goodbye. that you're unreliable. I might have suspected as much. Let me see your foot. What, excuse me, ma'am? I need to know if you're gonna recover. I might have plans for you, but if you're a goner, I won't waste my time. Plans? If you recover, you could be my assistant in your spare time. Of course, there are other applicants, if you're not interested. That turn Woodrow Call, I imagine. <laughs> no, not Corporal Call. He's a bit too solemn for my taste. And I expect he's too slow to make a fool of himself. I feel like a man who'll make a fool of himself immediately. Like you. <laughs> what were you thinking of when you fell off that cliff, Mr. McRae? 
I was worrying about Indians. Oh, goodness. Thought you might have been thinking about me. I had a notion I'd smitten you, but I guess I was wrong. I haven't smitten Corporal Call, that's for sure. Now, he's not a corporal. I told you that. He's a ranger like me. Can't you hear? Now, that's better. <laughs> Perhaps I have smitten you. And I intend to call him Corporal Call. I can choose names for my admirers, I suppose. Bye, Mr. McRae. I feel we have to depart in the morning. Well, this job will only keep you a couple of months, but I expect a visit from you before you depart. <laughs> Give my respects to Corporal Call. Well, now, if he's a corporal, I ought to be a corporal myself. Corporal McRae. No, don't sound right. Corporal Call. Somehow that has a solid ring. I can't swim hardly a lick. We won't be swimming, Bill, not today. See them tracks? The war party crossed here a few hours ago. Darn them Comanches, they would beat us across. How many do you make of it, Shad? About 30. Well, what do we do then? We won't rest the horses. We've come 60 miles already since Austin. We'll have to ride further than that to catch up with the troops. These horses will never make it without rest. Why don't we eat? Well, you might hook a fish. If you're lucky. He was just a youngin. Not too young to have killed you. You hadn't been quick. You gonna scalp him? You killed him, it's your scalp. Why, no. He didn't scalp you, he could have. Scalping ain't my way. Yeah, well, it'll be your way when you're a year or two older, boy. If you survive that long. her down and wait. When it's dark, we'll head out and find the expedition.
It was here in Buffalo, huh? Behind the log. The devil. I hate to let him come at us like this. He got Josh and Zeke, now he got Wally here. Get back here, you don't you be trying no ignorant fighting, dude. His spine is split. They're gonna be sneaking in among us if we don't leave right now. Try not to let your eyes get tired, boys. When your eyes get tired, your scalp's in the most danger. Let's go. It's time. Get him off me, Jimmy. Come on. Come on, get out. Leave him. Come on. Step up. Step up now. Why don't you wake me so we can leave with the expedition, you fool? Because I ain't a darn alarm clock, Mr. Rascal. We got to get us a fine scalping if we don't catch up. Johnny, we got to stop here at the store. Step up. Step up! Stop here at the store. That store ain't even open. I don't care if it ain't open. Stop! We ain't got no time for your nonsense. <clears throat> Step before I string you! Whoa! Whoa! All right. Uh, oh. Mr. McCray, my Roman. I expect he's jumped down off into that mud to propose to me. Ain't you coming down? I still got this sore ankle. What kind of Romeo falls off a bluff and cripples himself just when it's time to propose to Juliet? You're supposed to sing me a song or two and climb up here and beg me to marry you. What? <laughs> Ain't you read Shakespeare? What's wrong with your schooling? I can't climb. Ain't you coming down? We don't usually welcome customers this time of the morning. Oh. Now, I ain't a customer. I want to marry you. I have to leave, and Johnny won't wait long. Don't you look at me. You'll get muddy. Where's Corporal Call? What's become of him? Now you would ask. He's off chasing Indians. He ain't a corporal neither. I told you that. <laughs> well, in my fancy, he is. Don't you get brash with me after I got my feet all muddy just to see you off. I don't want Woodrow Call anywhere near your fancy. Will you marry me once I get back? Well, I don't know. How do I know who's going to walk into my store while you're off wandering the prairies? I might meet a gentleman who could recite Shakespeare to me for hours. But I love you. I won't be happy for one minute unless I know who will marry me once I get back. Well, I can't say for sure. Not right this minute. But I will kiss you, if that would help.
Come on, Gus. I'll help you up. Well, thank you, Manny. Step up. Step up now. Youngster just killed his first Comanche. Brave was floating down to Brazos, hiding behind a dead mule. Young Call here shot him dead. Well, that's alert behavior, Mr. Call. I'll make you a corporal on the spot. I say that's hasty. It's probably just dumb luck. Now, let me decide the promotions, Billy. If a Comanche was to float up on you under a dead mule, I imagine you'd be scalped. I'm always wary of dead animals when I cross a river. You lost five men, and this cub's the only one of you was able to kill an Indian? Man overboard! Man overboard! Bird's got a point. Maybe if we'd had a boat, we might have done better. I won't be sending out any more punishment squads if this is the best you can do. Come on. Come on. Life's just as dangerous. Whether you're a corporal or a private. Howdy. <laughs> you're back. Hey, Gus. Have you saluted him yet? Now, why not salute him? He's my part. He may be your part, but he's a corporal now. He killed a red boy, and the colonel promoted him. So you killed one. What was it like? Well, he was almost on me. I just shot in time. As soon as your leg heals proper, we'll have another fight. You'll kill Comanche, Colonel promote you too, then we'll be corporals together. And if I don't, they will want to kill me, and that'll be the end of things. Jeez, he's mostly a batch. Must have spotted something. <laughs> Buffalo, the great herd. They'll cross the river soon. Well, should we tell the colonel? Ah, he'll find out when he catches up with us. Let's go, boys. It's Buff. <laughs> Look at those buffs, Johnny Cooker. They say it takes two days to ride past this herd, even at a trot. Colonel. Looks like we're not the only ones who like buffalo liver. He's 
dude got three scalps on his lance. That's our men's hair, Colonel. Can't we get after them, sir? Not today, Billy. That's Kicking Wolf over to the side. Buffalo Hump's the killer, Kicking Wolf's the thief. The best horse thief on the plains. He'll put us a foot if we don't watch close. Well, what are we gonna do about our red neighbors then, Colonel? It's almost time to make camp and prepare the grub. Maybe we ought to invite them to join us. Sir, ask them to dinner? After what they did to our boys? This is a war, Colonel. Yes, you're right, Mr. Wallace, but even in war, it's the custom to parley. Who's gonna invite them, sir? Best ask can do it. Mr. Wallace, you can join them. And Corporal Call and his compañero will give the Corporal the chance to live up to his promotion. And kill a buffalo calf on the way back. Sam can cook the sweetbreads. That ought to flutter, I guess. Let's go. Come on! Trap shut. Bess will do the palaver. Tai voi aina kutkatsa, aina tukappa, sakuaita. Mitsi u nima aida godowe suda hina nawe kudowe. Deno su pana aita. Sa ku u a dana ni kata. Sa kan na na ku karawe. U soi pet tai. Tukwina ika tavoi tana pana da kase. Itok sai na hitna. Itok sai tots to si. Wayakoi iupi o ans mabe karawe. Ah. 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 I wonder why he pointed that lance at us. He said that both of you belong to him. He says he will take you when he is ready, but not today. He's coming to eat supper with the Colonel and will bring his wives. Now, how does he figure we belong to him? You cheated his lance. His lance is hungry for your liver. Well, it can just stay hungry. What about me? I didn't cheat his lance. No, with you, it is different. Different how? Different because you killed his son back on the Brazos River. and kill a couple of calves. Sam will take the liver and sweet meats. Leave the rest. Well, I'll head on back to camp and report. <laughs> Colin McRae, come with me. You weren't told to come. I prefer it if you go back. Prefer all you want. I don't work for no army. I won't be told what to do by no pup. <laughs> you weren't told to come. There's engines around Buffalo. They crawl in with them, shoot from under their bellies. Now, I got business to tend to. 
I don't care if that murdering Comanche's coming to eat. Now get out of my way! Will you tell him, Captain? Last time we rode together, you scapped some Mexicans, I recall. I despise young fools. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him, Woodrow. Yes, sir, man. Got guns in his boots. If you leave Mennekin to shoot, they'll kill us. You yanked that gun pretty quick. You'd make a fine corporal. I might make a corporal yet. That fellow was rude. I won't tolerate rude behavior. Uh, Colonel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cole. Sir, mm -hmm. I think Gus McCrae deserves to be a corporal, too. <laughs> well, he's puffed up tall as a mainmast. Let's hear your report. What did he do to earn this honor? He whacked John Cooker on the head with his pistol. Cooker followed us when he wasn't supposed to and wouldn't go back when we asked. You whacked Johnny? Yes, sir. John Kirk is the sort of fellow who'll kill you for picking your teeth if he's not in the mood for teeth picking. If you whacked him, why, then you oughtn't to be made a corporal. You ought to be made a general. You'd best watch your flank for a few days, Corporal McRae. Kirker is as mean as a weasel. Why don't you fellas get something to eat? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll make a short speech. Damn short. A buffalo hump is a murdering devil. And I know every one of you would like the chance to kill him. If you are patient, that chance may come. Today is not your chance, because he is my guest. And I will shoot the man who so much as looks at him funny. That way we can't spit while he's in the camp? Yeah. Yeah, you can spit. Just don't spit in his general direction. Colonel, why are you having him to dinner if he's such a killer? Curiosity. If you want to know the mettle of your opponent, it don't hurt to look him in the eye. I never looked the devil in the eye and looking to start now. I say you bed down with a rattlesnake, you're most likely to get bit. Mm. Here he comes. Tell him he's welcome, and throw in some guff about what a great chief he is, how he's stronger than the buffalo and wiser than the bear. Tell him his name's enough to freeze Mexican blood. We need some wind here. They expect it. Nave Tukutan. Tukuana. Sape Taivo. Kuju Tuka. Tukuana. Manana Kipu Chita. Ananicha Yutaivo. Nanami Wasiata. Papita Utsa Ukaad. Namiku Chu, Kwaetsa Waka, Te Yu Kuid. Haate Waipaha Hana, Kane to Petse Hasu White. Ikana Nada Te, Atawe Yosukwe, Te Anada Takwe Sata. Taking a fancy to marry, has he? Yes, he wants her for his wife. He says he's seen her before. Mm -hmm. He calls her turtle-catching woman. He wants Captain Faulkner's rifle, too. Shadrach, what do they call you in Comanche? What's up, Pete? Tail of the bear. You tell that rascal that Maddie is the woman of Tail of the Bear. Utawai Pewa. 
sapi quasi quo. Aha. O sa piqua sita dua viti tu cupe ke u u catia pa ue e peni e tui. I quaha u a sape a quasi. Pa, aina a tu mi a pena sukni. What do you say? You said Tale of the Bear is too old for such a strong woman. He still wants the rifle. Well, Billy, you should have hit that fine gun of yours. Now you're gonna have to give it to him. This gun cost me six months' wages, Colonel. I ordered it from England, and I waited two years to get it. I'll be damned if I'm giving it to him. Give it to him anyway. You don't invite a great chief to your camp and then let him leave without a present. That's elemental. I don't care what's elemental. I'll not give up my gun. Give him a musket. It's more than he deserves. I'll decide what he deserves. I won't do it. I'll resign first. You resign, Kappa. I will not tolerate mutiny. Sat down. Like a motherless child, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, a long ways from home, a long You see the look on Falconer's face when the colonel shot him? Why, he was puzzled, that's for certain. We was all puzzled. You don't expect to see a man shot down like that just to please an Indian. 
I mean, he was a captain. You at least think he'd get a trial before he had to be shot? He got a trial. A colonel's trial. I wonder what happens in an army when the colonel goes crazy. He had to make a show for Buffalo Hump. He wanted to show him he had sand. Once the engine thinks you don't have sand, he don't show no mercy. Now, that one don't show no mercy, sand or not. I think the colonel's insane. Killing somebody don't mean you're insane. You can think what you like. I think he's insane. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. A long ways from home. A long ways from home. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long ways from home. Did you ever get hitched? Me? <laughs> Depend on the gal, I guess. What if I was the gal? I thought you had a notion to get to California, Manny. What would you want with me? I'm an old berry. <laughs> the pod's drying up. I do want to go to California. I, I want to go more than anything else. But could we both go together? I hear the grapes is real sweet in California. There's a lot of young scamps in this camp, Maddie. What would you want with a woolly old dog like me? I just would, Chad. I'll get hitched with you in a minute. You're a fine gal, Manny. Sure, I'd get hitched with you. Maybe we find a preacher up the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Come luck, boys. Long way back. Long way to come to go back where you was. If I ate another plate of beans, I'll float back to Austin. This team would have never made it to Santa Fe Mall. I mean, you're the one that wanted to come on this darn expedition. They're going home, boys. These wide open spaces don't appeal much to greenhorns. There go the bankers and the card sharps. And the whores. All except the Great Western. Glad he's retired, ain't you heard? Retired? I didn't know whores retired. Maddie has. She's Shad's woman now. Don't you go making no suggestions, you hear? Why? What if I do? Well, Shad'll box you. Shad don't mind striking out. Shadrack's an old man. I could whip him in a minute. 
Might be. Hey, are you my friend or ain't you? I didn't say I wasn't your friend. I just said maybe. Oh, uh, Mr. Wallace. Oh, ah. Mr. Wallace, uh, do you happen to have anything for bites? Bites? Yeah, I, I was out answering the call of nature when I had the grave misfortune to be attacked by a scorpion. Well, I think you're cursed, Carson. First, you trip over your suitcase and get stickers in your face, and now you got a stinger in your ass. Sir, everything in this country is sharp. Well, let's go see Sam. He's got a lotion that cures all ills. Oh. Oh, don't be picky, boys. If you can't find no buff, bring us back a nice fat pig. Yeah! Where'd all the buffalo go? Wasn't but a week ago, and there were thousands of them. Well, them rains caught us, and we had to wait a week to cross the Brazos. You had to wait, but the buffalo did not. There were thousands of them. You'd have thought one or two would lag behind. We done killed the last of our babes. We'll be eating mush all the way to Santa Fe now. You got the best eyes. Who's coming? It's three horses. No. One buffalo, two horses. Some kind of record. Two red Indians chase a buffalo all the way through camp and nobody shoots them. Well, it seemed a harsh thing, Colonel. They're so tired and hungry, they hardly even notice us. Well, they would have noticed you if you'd have been tied to a torture post. Shad's right about that. At least we got us a buff. It means a few days off the mush. Well, let's carve them up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that buff had got clean away if you wasn't such a fine shot, Shad. That's it for me. I'm going home. If you're headed back to Austin, I'm with you. this grub on our horses. 
damn it! I knew we should have used oxen instead of mules and horses. Oxen are slow, Colonel. Colonel. Mm. Look. Uh, who would that be out here in the brakes? Buenas noches. What's he talking about? It ain't night. If there's anything good out here, I don't know what it would be. He means Charlie Goodnight. Who's Charlie Goodnight? Never heard of the man. You'll find out soon enough. Howdy. I'm Charlie Goodnight. This is Bill and this is Bose. Why are you trying to take wagons through this country? It ain't meant for wagons. Won't you get down and take coffee? We don't get many guests out here. You can't pause. These girls were stole two weeks ago. Their folks won't have no peace of mind till we return them. You didn't answer me when I asked about the wagon. Well, sir, don't you know who we are? No. I recognize General Lloyd, though. Should have left him. He's too drunk for travel. We're the Texas Santa Fe Expedition. We're on our way to New Mexico. We mean to annex it. We may have to hang a few Mexicans, but I expect we'll soon whip them back. No, they'll hang you, if you make it there. And why wouldn't we make it, sir? That's the Cap Rock. Once you get on top of it, there's nothing. I'm sure there's something there. There's grass, at least. Oh, yes, sir, lots of grass. But I've been a Texas Ranger for over 15 years. And I've rarely met the man who can live on grass. And I've rarely met the horse who can travel 400 miles without water. 400? I was told there was a passage along the Red River. Yes, it's shorter. But that's not the Red. Not the Red? Nope, that's the Big Wichita. The Big Wichita? I told that fool it wasn't a Red. It ain't sandy enough. Red's got that bad quicksand. I never did trust that damn pony. He's got us lost, and now he's going to try to steal our horses if we don't keep an eye on him. Hello, Shad. You turn 100 yet? I'm grounded, Charlie. Morning, Miss Roberts. Morning, Charlie. Wallace, why would you walk all the way to New Mexico to get hung? Ain't there enough hang ropes in Texas? I ain't planning on no hanging, Charlie. You'll all get a lot worse than hanging if Buffalo Hump catches you. This here's the Comancheria. Comanches belong here, you don't. I only came to get these young captives back, and now I'm going home, and I advise you do the same. Here's some vittles for them young uns. They look like they could use a bite. Much obliged. Set a close watch. Like kicking wolf steal your horses, you'll need to eat most of them to get to New Mexico. All right, go to Boston, go to Boston. If I was you, I'd take the bird's advice. <laughs> that Charlie, good night. He's salty. I noticed. Ten. Ten. Bad news, Colonel. No other kind out here in the wastes. What is it now? Best Dots and Al Chiefs are gone. They took about ten horses with them. Curse those scoundrels! <laughs> can you catch them? Because if you can, I'd like to hang them from a yard arm if I had a yard arm. Go on, get them! Take those two young corporals with you. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah, that's bad. Where are we going? Come on. There's a Paladura Canyon. Black goes down for nearly forever. Enough meat there to get us to Santa Fe. 
We'll let those horse thieves go. Comanches will take care of them for us. Woodrow, you head on back and tell the colonel. Gus may be looking for a way going down. Whip up now. We got to get to harvesting these buff. Have mercy. Some Indians. Bunch of Comanches. We struck a big canyon. There's buffalo in it, hundreds of them. Got some Bigfoot looking for a trail down. Good news. Sam! Let Sam see if he can pull that toothpick out of your arm, then, then we'll go kill us some meat, huh? I don't know how many Comanches there might be. That's all right. We're on our way to the rescue. It's a fine morning for a fracas. Let's kill some buffalo! Yeah! Yeah! seen about 20 Indians, but I doubt that's all of them. There could be a thousand. We can whip 20. I don't know about a thousand. I hate to pass up that meat. This canyon's awful steep, Colonel. I wouldn't want to have to climb out of there with Buffalo Hump after me. What do we do, sir? We camp. Set a good guard. Maybe the Red Boys will have hoisted anchor by morning. We can go kill us some buff. Come on. Tell the colonel. Oh, yeah. No, you tell him. Go on. Uh, colonel? Colonel? What? Colonel! What? Uh, we lost 20, 20 horses last night. It was like they, they got sucked up into the air. Ah, uh -huh, they didn't get sucked up into the air. Kickin' Wolf got them. He could steal horses out of a store. <laughs> if I could catch that rascal, I'd tie him to a horse's tail. Let that horse kick him to death with a name like Kickin' Wolf. That'd be appropriate. <laughs> Colonel, look. What? Fire! Lord. We better make it back to the last creek, boys. Back up! Oh, 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 oh. 
Like it's jump for fry. Jet wreck, and we started backfire. It's too late. We're trapped. I'm not clipping that shear. Come on, man. We climb down and hang on. Maybe we won't burn. Head for the cliff, boys. Head for the cliff. Come on, Mr. Bumper. Go to Boston. Go to Boston. Here and I not get no toothaches. <clears throat> I wonder where them Indians went. They set another fire. We could get fried up like that rabbit the colonel ate. Don't it worry you not? You think too much. 
You think about the wrong things, too. I thought you wanted to be a ranger till you met that girl. Now I guess you'd rather be in the dry goods business. I wasn't thinking about no girl. I was thinking about getting burned up. Well, being a ranger means you can die any day. You don't want to risk it, you ought to quit. Hellfire, you didn't even need to shoot it. You're gonna hit it over the head with your gun. Well, that little buck was only half growed. I doubt it'll run more than a mile or two. When we ease on after it, we might be able to kill it yet. I'm game. Matilda, I'll be back in a little while. Shadrach! Wallace! Where the hell are you going? It it's in no Uta way. Uta way. Isu wune kihuna. Kedemas sukai. Tupas sukai. Camped out and fell asleep. It's hard enough to find your way on this plane in the daylight. How could anyone do it at night? They only been gone one night. Maybe they ain't coming back. Maybe they just left. Left to go where? We're on the stake plains. No place to go except to wander. But if he ain't dead, I'll shoot him, him or Wallace, one. Why it would take two scouts to track one deer is a conundrum. A what? It's a conundrum. It's a thing that you can't figure out. Like two scouts tracking one deer. Well, two's better than one out here. I wouldn't go off walking out here without somebody with me who'd find their way back. Shad had ever been lost. Night or day. If he ain't back, it's because he's dead. That humpback man got him. I know he did. <laughs> if he did leave, I, I guess he just didn't want to take me with him.
Love's a terrible price to pay for company in the matter. <laughs> says you two's getting hitched as soon as you come across a preacher. Yeah, uh, we're good as hitched now. Preacher just be frosting. Mm. Risky business retiring whores, especially when you're traveling with a rough crew like this one. Maddie retired herself, Bigfoot. And any man that interferes with her is gonna have me to deal with. Too old to be bunking in the chill by myself. Besides, I like Maddie. I always did. Yeah, guess you've known her a while. Yep. I met Maddie the first day she set foot on the Missouri shore about 10 years ago. I was guiding a party in the Santa Fe out of St. Louis. Me and a few boys from the fur company. And um, her daddy was a drunkard. And he got drunk one night and fell in the Arkansas River and drowned. Then her mama got the chills a few days later. And Maddie was orphaned out. I was about 50 men in that party and not one angel among them. So the wagon ball set her straight a few days after her mama died and told her to be a whore or be left. Those were rough times, Shad. Yeah. Or no place for church going ladies in the West End. <laughs> Just a place for whores. Yeah. Not many of them lasted either. Now, Maddie lasted. Maddie's got grit. <laughs> you remember that big old snapping turtle she caught? <laughs> <laughs> Scared the hell out of everybody. <laughs> She's a strong woman. So you're hitched, Shad. And that's that. Yeah. Hitched, that's that. <laughs> I aim to abide with Maddie till the day I die. You was dead. Oh, that little deer was beater than we thought. It took us a little while to catch up. Oh. Where the hell have you been? But where do you think? Nobody told you to go chasing deer. If I had irons, Wallace, I'd put them on you right now. Oh, you won't be putting no chains on me, I guess. <sighs> then you get a bullet for your insolence. I'm the colonel here. I won't have my command ignored. You ain't no colonel. You're nothing but a land pirate. They run you off the sea, now you're out here trying to pirate Santa Fe. I took my last order from you, Cobb. Shadrack feels the same. Let's see how hard you want to chain. Once I carve you a rip. <laughs> Crazy fools. We need every man we can get with or survive. Best be saving up to fight the Comanches and not be running into each other. Put the knife down. Put it down, Big. Put it down. All right. All right. But I still give the orders here. You understand? We'll give better ones in. I wouldn't waste a fart on your damn orders. 
what set them off? Hunger, I figure. I'm so hungry, I could stab somebody myself. When can we eat the deer? As soon as we cook it, Johnny. young corporal we'll see if I can't scare up some game. Do what you damn please, well, unless you will anyway, but I'll caution you on one thing. If you get captured, keep quiet. Don't tell them our numbers. Let them think there are a thousand men coming. Well, I won't be bragging on no mighty army, Colonel. Getting captured might be the only way some of us stay alive. I'd get captured right now if whoever caught me had some grub. Come on, boys. Boys, it's a buck. Now hold on, hold on. Go slow now. I don't want to spook him. I'll take the first shot. And if he don't drop, then you boys shoot. Aim right behind the foreleg. I hit the brute solid two times. I hit him too. How'd you know if you hit him, Woodrow? You're as blind as a mole. Let's go. Let's go. You insolent fool. The mountains are that way. Where there's mountains, there's snow. Where there's snow, there's water. Were well, you thinking about heading? There's nothing. You'll all die. There's the South Canadian. There'll be water in the South Canadian this time of year. The South Canadians, at least a week's walk, Turner. What are you planning to drink for a week? You can yap all you want to, Colonel. We're leaving, and we're leaving now. You're crazy! If you don't starve, the Comanches will get you! You're a fool, Turner! You're all fools! Some fat birds. Damn, son. Gus. Gus. Don't you stop. We already got three. Hey, you guys, hold your fire. You got three. I expect you'll hold them all. Where'd you learn to chuck rocks like that, Woodrow? Anybody who practices can hit what they throw at, I reckon. Now, if you're so good at throwing rocks, you should have chunked one of that buffalo. <laughs> I never seen nothing like that buffalo. Must have been some kind of witch buffer, something.
Now, why do you expect they run out like that? I expect they think we're devils. <laughs> By God, maybe Caleb could conquer this state. If he gets here, these folks don't look like fighters. Agua. See, nice stuff. Certainly you may drink. It's a long walk from Texas. I'm Capitan Salazar. Put down your weapons and we'll come to no harm. Now that's a fine welcome. Senor, it is not a welcome. It is an arrest. We should have never let ourselves be chained. I would rather be chained than shot. Well, soldiers ain't nothing but boys. I expect we could whip them if we hadn't walked into a darn ambush. Well, that captain wasn't no boy, and he had a big pistol. <laughs> it's just a mud belt. I imagine we could dig our way out if we tried. Dig out and go where, Woodrow? We're chained. We nearly starved to death getting this far. So far, we've been a disgrace in every encounter. Well, we ain't dead. We've still got time to learn. I guess this is the part of New Mexico that ain't filled with gold and silver. <laughs> <Good. laughs> I told you not to expect gold and silver. Yes, we did. Try to sleep, Manny. We'll have to be up marching early. I can't get to sleep for wondering about the boys, Shad. Got some call. They're young. We'll never see him again. Uh, I no doubt they'll get thirsty, but who don't out here? Just don't worry about them, though. They left with Bigfoot Wallace, and he's as good a plainsman as I know. I expect he'll bring him back safe. Bigfoot. He's skillful. But he ain't the best plainsman I know. The best plainsman I know is laying right here with me. He'd sleep like that if they was about to hang him. Well, if he's about to be hung, he might as well snooze. Buenos dias, senores. I hope you're refreshed. We have a long way to travel. What's the delay? The sun's been up for an hour. To conduct a trial. We're bringing the scoundrel in now. Why, it's best, Doss. What'd that horse thief do? Stole a ring from the governor's wife, the finest oh. silver. That is why you made your long walk, is it not, to steal our silver and gold? Oh, 
Well, I guess that colonel was right about there being silver out here. He didn't mention the firing squads, though. At least we'll get to see Santa Fe. Heard it's a fine town. You will never see Santa Fe. We're going south to catch your friends. Then you will be marched to San Lazaro. Where's San Lazaro? Below El Paso del Norte. I've never been there, but I believe it's about 500 miles. How far? About 500 miles. It's cold. Yeah. You boys been living too soft a life. This ain't cold. Still in these parts in a month or two, you'll see some cold weather make this seem like summer. What is that, a buffalo? That's a bear! That ain't just a bear, that's a grizzly. Run, boy! Oh, oh, Till our feet come off. He hadn't come along and scared him. I just hope he's content to eat that horse. Maybe he won't track us. Well, why did he track us? Well, maybe he's at Texas before. Maybe he likes the way they taste. Well, he'd have to eat Woodrow then. He's in Texas. Myself, I'm from Tennessee. We better stop here and wait for it to clear. We could be headed for Canada for all I know. I think I see somebody. Something's moving over there. Open that deck, Grizzly. Uh, if it was that bear, we'd already have met you. Two of Salazar's boys. Well, now what do we do? We shoot them or take them with us? Well, why I ain't armed. I can't shoot two boys in cold blood. And one of them give us coffee, Big. They ain't got any fighting them anyway. Hey, just trying to get away from that bear, same as us. You ought to go on home. Go. Get. Go on out, bear moose. We ain't got time for conversation here now. Go on, get. Ah, hell, and come on. Come on. Hope we're moving away from that bear. It won't matter which way we're moving if he wants us. He can track you by smell. If he wants us, he could be 10 feet behind us right now. They move quiet. Unless they're mad, like that one was. I hope he ain't back there. My friend Willie got hit by a bear up on the Trinity River. Figured it out from the tracks. Now, so he got hit. So what's the story? He got hit. That's the story. So tell us, was he torn up bad? Well, Willie was sitting there fishing. And that bear come up behind him so quiet, he had no notion that bear was anywhere around. That's how quiet they are when they're stalking you. He is mostly it. He even at his belt buckle. His belt buckle? Yep. He had a double eagle made into a belt buckle. I always admired that buckle. I meant to take it. I mean, he was dead anyway and didn't have no kin, but that darn bear had it while I was eating Willie. And that was that.
I'd seen the light up ahead. Looks like campfires. Yes, but whose campfires? If it's Indians, they'll scalp us. If it's Mexicans, they'll shoot us. We'll squat here and wait for morning. Squat here and wait for that bear, you mean? Myself, I'd rather get shot than clawed to death. Gus, Gus, don't you get too far ahead. You'll get lost. Y'all can squat here and wait for that bear to eat you, but I ain't. Shut up. They can hear you. I was whispering. You whisper loud enough to wake the dead. Hold on, who's there? Billy, it's us. Don't shoot. Boys, is that you? Judge Bill, we're coming in. Wait, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I need to think about this. Billy, it's us. Why would you need to think about it? Because I've heard Comanches can imitate white folks' voices. You might be Comanches. I ain't Comanche, I'm Gus McCray. Well, I guess you're you, Gus. <laughs> Excuse my nerves. I'm a little, a little jumpy. Come on in, boy. Buenas noches, señor. You mean there ain't no grub at all? No. Oh, yeah, in two days. Shad's getting poorly, too. Where's your bird, Colonel? Beelzebub? We ate him. Made a fine soup. The whole country. Uh -huh. How many of us are left? Thirty. Now your back. But numbers ain't the problem. We're low on bullets. We'd have to kill ten of them with each shot. The truth is, I haven't felt the same about this enterprise since we made soup out of Beelzebub. It's just like it was the first time we went out. Nobody knows what to do. Worse off now than we were with Major Chevalier. I believe I'll walk on over there and have a little parley with that general. We still have that flag. What do you need a flag for? But well, we brought the damn rag. Why not use it? It might impress him. I got it, Colonel. Corporal Call? You tie that to your musket. You and Corporal McCray come with me. I need some attendance. Now, if that general has any manners at all, he'll invite us to breakfast. Come on. Gus, if they feed you breakfast, snatch me some bacon. I'd sure like a bite of bacon. Good luck to you boys.
little Shad. What if they kill him? They're just boys. Oh, now, Maddie, don't you worry none. They're waving the flag of the Republic there. They ain't gonna kill him. Three of us. They'd be behaving like cowards if they took advantage of us. Maybe they are cowards. Yeah, let's ignore the infantry. Ignore this rabble. We're heading straight for the effort. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. You two escaped the bear. Ordinarily, I would shoot you for escaping, but no one can be blamed for running from a grizzly bear. I guess you soldiers are acquainted. We traveled together. I'm Colonel Cobb. I want to see the general. Hablas español? Un poco. Introduce you. General, it's Coronel Cobb. General, you put that flag down. I'm pretty sure they know who we are. Would you gentlemen like some breakfast? We have eggs. No thanks, we there. In that case, may I offer you some coffee? Well, yeah, I'll take some. Senora, traeles café, por favor. How come you say we ate? We ain't ate nothing since them prairie chickens. These Mexicans, they got plenty. Oh, man, they got plenty. I won't sit down and feed myself with the enemy when our men are about ready to eat their belts. It ain't our fault they didn't get to be escorts. Now, drink that coffee and think about that food you ain't gonna eat. Gracias. Well, men, they feed you? They offered, but I said no. I won't eat with skunks when my friends are starving. I see. That's the noble view, Corporal. I'm better at the selfish view. I had an excellent breakfast. The eggs were tasty. I'd like to leave. Oh, you can't leave. I just surrendered to General Damasio. I have his word that if we lay down our arms, not a man will be killed. I expect to keep my weapons unless I'm shot. Now, that's brash, Corporal. When I give an order, I expect it to be obeyed. Now, you're a young man. I won't have you dying over foolishness. I'd rather die fighting than be put in leg irons again. If you are determined to die, I will oblige you myself. I shot Billy Faulkner for disobedience, and I'll do the same for you. Give up your gun, Joe. I despise you for a coward. Capitan, could you put this man under heavy guard until he cools down? He's too reckless for his own good. Corporal McCray, march back over to that ridge where the troop is. Tell them to lay down their guns. Tell them they won't be hurt, and tell them they'll be fed just as soon as they surrender. Colonel, I'll go, but they might not like the news. We're not having an Alamo or a Goliath, not here. Colonel Travis was a fool, though a brave fool. But at least he had a church to fight in. We don't have anything! <laughs> 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 
this little war is over. Well, go on. The sooner you go, the sooner they'll get breakfast. Running off too. Why to Santa Fe, Corporal? With his fine army. General DiMaggio says that the governor wants to meet me. I think he plans to give me a little banquet. <laughs> What's the orders? The orders are to surrender our weapons. Caleb's a pure out skunk surrender for us. What do you think, Shad? Well, we could run from them hills, shoot our way through. I doubt more than a few of us would make it. Give them a scrap, at least. Not a one of us would make it. Well, they might spare Maddie. Well, I don't want to be spared if Shad ain't. I'm damn hungry. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I might surrender them rascals. I could get me some bacon. I expect they'll line us up and shoot us, but I'm for breakfast. I hope they got a good cook. All right, boys. There are too many of them. Let's lay our guns down. Brave but foolish. The colonel had no choice but to surrender. The men don't have no ammunition and they have no food. If he hadn't surrendered, we would have killed all of you. I despise Caleb Cobb. At least he won't look so pretty at the governor's banquet. I'm afraid neither will you after we've given you a hundred lashes. I'd 
like to speak to your friend, Corporal McCrea, will permit it. No, I'll talk to him later. Corporal, there may be no later. Well, I expect to live. If Carl don't live, I'll kill that snaggletooth bastard that's doing the whipping. Suéltenlo. By oh. God, he's alive. It's remarkable. Few men survived that many lashes. He'll live to bury you. strong one, this one. If he lives three days, he will survive and walk to San Lazaro. You don't listen. I said he'd live to bury you. Adelante! 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 Danger. Woodrow, you ain't gonna die. Ponga said he's just gonna come get you. Tomorrow the corporal walks. This boy can't walk. 
Look, I carried him off that wagon, and I put him here to keep him warm. Shadows don't need to be walking either. We must burn the wagon, or some of us will freeze. All men must walk now. The corporal will walk. The old man is correct. We are in Apache country now. Cuidado. This is the work of the Apache war chief, Gomez. Only Gomez would treat a general like this. Most Apaches would sell a general, but he knows no law. Ain't his law. Expect you don't mind breaking. I did not see your colonel anywhere. I wonder what happened to him. Coward, I expect he escaped. Boys! Colonel? Boys? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? He's a patch of devils. They blinded me with thorns. Hey, I'm strong, my leg. They left me here to starve. Come out as dawn. We're on the edge of the Ornado del Muerto, the dead man's walk. It's a terrible journey even for a healthy man. Many of us will die crossing it. Perhaps all of us will die. We cannot take you with us. We have to look to ourselves. I'm only crippled. I won't be left. You give me a horse. I'm a soldier. I can make it Santa Fe. I can't take you with us. And I can't send you back. If I give you a soldier and a horse, Gomez will find you again, and this time he'll do worse. I'll take my chances. But I won't. You're a brave officer. It's time for you to end it yourself. I'm a seaman. I never expected to die in the middle of a desert. If I had to be on my ship. What the hell am I doing here? I know that you're a great pirate, Colonel Cobb. You stole much treasure from the King of Spain. Yes. Lost it all at cards. Give me the pistol, then. You may be on your way. Give me the pistol. You know, those wild Texas boys are all mad at me for surrendering. I expect they'd hang me if they got the chance. It'll amuse me to cheat them by shooting myself. Wallace, didn't you say through the eyeball was best? Yeah. Bad luck day for me. Fresh out eyeballs. I guess the eye hole will have to do. Capitan, adios. Adios, Colonel. Ah! Jump up, boys! <laughs> Grab the gun! Oh, Colonel, you shoot it on! I'll take that! You know, Colonel, you shoot it on! Colonel, take it! <laughs>
Váyanse. Cuídenos. Lay still, Shad. Uh, hey, you ain't hit bad, are you? I'm killed, Maddie. No, you, no, you ain't. You, you just need to rest here, and, and I'll, I'm gonna nurse you back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna nurse you. Uh -uh. You're a fine woman, Maddie. Don't you forget that. I'm just sorry we didn't get hitch popper before I got myself killed. Never you mind. We was hitch popper enough, Shad. Another inch over, you'd be dead as shad. Life's a peculiar business, Captain. Old Shad been shot at by some of the best marksmen in the West. Now there he lays, killed by a blind man. You know them a long time. My shad? I know them since I was 14. Ma and, and Pa and me, we had just started west on the Santa Fe Trail. Shad was one of our guides. He's about the most handsome man I ever seen walk that trail. Then Mom and Pa died. And it was Shad who took care of me, mostly. If it hadn't have been for him, I, I would have never survived. Give me a buffalo hide or I would have froze. Well, he was a fine shot. And he could track most any critter. That he could. That ain't why I loved him, Woodrow. <laughs> My shad was honest. <laughs> you just don't find many honest men. <laughs> Not out here on the plains. <laughs> I 
I don't expect I'll ever be that lucky again. Captain, I'm fearful we'll all die if we have to sleep out in the open in weather like this. How far is it to that village? I've never been to the village of San Saba. I just know it's there. Will you go ahead and leave me. I'm slowing you down. Hush, Woodrow. We ain't leaving you. How'd it get to be so cold, Bill? I've never been no place was this cold. My foot's paining me. I don't know if I can keep up. I'm with you, Johnny. If you fall behind, I'll come get you. Vamos a cambiar cada dos horas. Ya, váyanse. Why don't you let us go, Captain? We ain't all gonna survive this. I cannot let you go, Mr. Wallace. I have my orders. Foolish orders. Your men are dying, too. I never said my orders were intelligent, Mr. Wallace. I've been a military man for 20 years, and most of my orders have been foolish. I've almost been killed because of foolish orders. And now I've been given an order so foolish that I would laugh if it wasn't that I was in such pain. I cannot let you go.
and use the sheep shins. Because you saw the smoke first, Corporal McRae. You and your friends will not be bound. Johnny, ain't he here? He ain't here, Bill. He fell way back behind me and, and Woodrow. It's that bad foot. I gotta go get Johnny. I told him I'd bring him in. Find Johnny. You may be too late, Mr. Coleman. But I gotta go. Johnny's my part. If that's mutton, I'll have some, Matty. Come on. I see it. I see it. Oh. I swear it's been a cold walk. And you're gonna eat some mutton, you hear me? I won't hear a word about it either. We'll have to be tight again. I regret it, but it is necessary. I can afford no risks on this journey. Crossing the Ordinale is risk enough. Even the Apache will not cross it. This boy is hurt. He can't do nothing. Please, why are you going to tie him? Because of the fury in him. If I were to choose one of you to tie, I would tie Corporal Call. We'll see who wants to live and who wants to die. I intend to live. What's the matter, Johnny? Don't be fearful now. It's warmer now. We got food. We gonna make it. Yes, sir, we gonna make it.
tiempo. Agarren no, nomás los que pueden cargar. I thought you said Apaches don't come here. Guess those Indians that don't come here took your horse. Gomez came. He's like no other man. He has no fear. And this rope he cut was three feet from your throat. He could just as easily have killed you. He could have. But there would have been little sport. Let's walk. Apache's not like us. Apache can travel for 50 miles on foot in a day. He don't need horses and mules, except to eat them. I'll be wishing we was feasting on mule meat for too long. Oh, God, Bill. I hope it don't get cold again tonight. I don't mind dying if I could just do it warm. Shut up, Johnny, and walk. I cared you once, and I care you again if it comes to that. <laughs> Did he freeze? Well, he's froze now. Yes. Freeze to death. He is killed. How was he killed? 
throat cut. He was castrated, too. I expect he was beyond feeling when that happened. Captain, we gotta keep this between ourselves. This whole bunch is ready to give up. They'll panic and start deserting. Whoever killed Johnny will pick them off one by one. Let's go, Miss. He's toying with us. Mr. Wallace, we may have to fight hand to hand against the Apache before this is done. We'll fight with you, Captain. No, no, I'm hiking gone. I'm done. Get up, senor. I will make camp soon. You can rest then. I'm plumb more out. I can't go no further, Captain. Senor, I cannot permit this. We would all like to stop. But you're a prisoner under guard, and I make the decisions to stop. I ask you courteously to get up and walk. I prefer not to shoot you, but I will if you do not obey me. Too tired, Captain. I reckon I'm just too tired. I see. I'm sorry, Senor. His suffering is over. Let us march. Vámonos. Adelante. Captain. He's nibbling at us. Captain, most of your men are dying. Most of ours are, too. What's the point of keeping us prisoners when we're all dying? Turn us loose. Let it be every man for himself. Maybe one or two of us will make it home if we do it that way.
You want to be free. Kill me. Captain, I must have misheard. No, you heard correctly. I've decided that you should all be free. If freedom is what you want. But I'm a Mexican officer. With orders to take you to San Lazaro, and my orders are my orders. I cannot free you. But I can't allow you the opportunity to free yourself. All you have to do is shoot me. Captain, I don't want to shoot you. At times, I could have done it easily. But now you're worse off than we are. I got no stomach for shooting you now. If not you, maybe another. Perhaps Corporal Call would shoot me. He endured the lash and by some miracle survived. Feet are in pain, and yet I kept you walking. Surely you want revenge. Caleb Carl broke my foot, not you, Captain. You didn't whip me, neither. I'd shoot you if this was a fight. I can't just take your gun and shoot you down. Corporal McRae, surely you hate me enough to shoot me. Well, I might have could have before, Captain. Now, I'm too tired to shoot anything. I'd sooner get back home and marry my girl. How can you talk about such bosh when a man's life is at stake, you fool? She probably just gone married somebody else by now anyways. Now you shut up, or I'll break that other foot. Kill me, senorita. And you'll all be free. Free to what? It ain't you I need to be freed of. I ain't a prisoner. I just walked along with these boys. What I'd like to be free of is this damn desert. Shooting you won't accomplish that. Kill me for revenge. Kill me to avenge your dead. Why? They all died from foolishness. All except my shad. My shad died from being at the wrong spot at the wrong time. Shooting you won't bring him back. Or make me miss him any less. My Caleb Cobb, he'd have shot you. No doubt. He did shoot me. But in that, too, he failed. Or maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps he didn't fail. Perhaps he merely wanted me to walk for hundreds of miles before I died. You did not accept my terms. So you were all still my prisoners. If you had killed me, I would have been martyred. Now I'll merely be disgraced. Not in my eyes. Not when you're talking about military work. You've done your best, Captain. You're still doing it. Caleb Cobb never would have got us this far. I agree, Mr. Wallace. But you will not be one of the men who will judge me. I've lost most of my men and many of my prisoners. That's the only thing the generals will look at as I deliver you to San Lazaro. Gentlemen, March. Almost.
¡Capitán! ¡Aquí hay comida! Soup. We do have water. Look, them specks. They're ducks. I seen them take off. There must be water. Boys got good eyesight. It might taste better if it was served on a plate. Makes me sneeze. It's bad. <laughs> it does taste bitter as sin. Well, I wouldn't know about that, Bill. I myself am a stranger to sin. <laughs> What's the point in Maddie spending all her time with Woodrow? Well, Maddie's got her motherly side. Most cows will take a calf comes up to them if it needs her. Well, I need her, too. I'm as much a calf as he is. We're the same age. Yeah, but you're easy to get along with. Woodrow ain't. Well, then she ought to be sitting with me. Not that hard-headed fool. I'll look at him. <laughs> he ain't even talking to her. I could out-talk him any day. Well, maybe it ain't talk she's after. What are you griping about, Gussie? She ain't sitting with me, neither. Why are you talking anyway? You don't know nothing about women. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that they don't always cotton to the easy fella. Shoot, if, if they did, I'd have been married long ago. <laughs> oh, well, Bill's right, Gus. Maddie likes Woodrow because he's hard-headed. Well, I suppose you two fellers know everything. <laughs> Maddie and her boys. I doubt she expected to be mother to two pups when she headed west with this outfit. This soup's put me in the mood for cobbler and taters. My mom could cook some cobbler and taters. I could read a newspaper through this soup if I had a newspaper. Well, I didn't know you could read, Bill. <laughs> Still wish I had my harmonica. It's dreary out here without no tunes. Man, Corporal, if you saw Gomez, you're the only white man to do so and live. I hate New Mexico. I ain't bears, it's Apache. Where'd he go so fast? There's no cover out here. Apaches can hide better than Comanches. Apache could hide under a cow turd if that's all there was. 
They were too smart about this country. Corporal's right. We're strangers in this land compared to them. If they belong here, we don't. We know a little bit about the animals, that's about it. They know which weeds to eat. They can smell out roots and dig them up. When we learn how to smell out roots and which weeds to eat, and we can fight them on even terms. I ain't never gonna be in the mood to study up all weeds. I'll study them if it means something to eat. I'm tired of listening to my belly growl. Uh, you put a bullet in the right place, they'll die just the same as you or me. Their skins ain't the same color as ours, but their blood's just as red. Captain, half of your boys are too scared to shoot. That Apache's just whittling away at us. You think you can trust me with a rifle? The only time I've ever given a Texan a gun, he shot me. Be honorable, Mr. Wallace. I won't shoot you, Captain. But I might shoot Gomez. To the Kalayo Mountains. As soon as we cross them, we'll find food. We gotta get to them before we can cross them. They're looking for a piece off. I can walk a week, still not get to them. We ain't gonna last no week unless we find some food. Levantense! Ya casi estamos ahí. Si se quedan aquí, Gómez los van a matar. Levantense! They're finished, Captain. We all got our finishing point. These boys have reached theirs. Voy a dejar un rifle y una pistola. Si vienen los apaches, use el rifle. Think the captain lost his phone, Dave. Oh, ain't that good. Lost too many men, too many prisoners. Expect he feels disgraced. Those boys a pistol and a rifle each. They can fight if they have to, or shoot themselves if it comes to it. Oh, I can't hardly stand it no more. I just can't. These boys dying day after day. down to it, Maddie can catch us another snapping turtle. Mr. Wallace. May I have that gun back? Oh, well, that's right, Captain. This is yours, ain't it? Summer. See me, Captain. Vámonos. Let's go have a drink of water. Soy Capitán Salazar. ¿Dónde está su jefe? No tenemos jefe. Los apaches vinieron cuando él estaba en el campo y se lo llevaron. Ellos se llevan a los jóvenes, Capitán. 
Por eso no hay hombres jóvenes en el pueblo, ni tampoco mujeres jóvenes. Cuando tienen la edad suficiente para ser esclavos, los apaches se los llevan. ¿Qué dice? Dice que los apaches tomaron la cabeza de su ciudad. Se llaman a los jóvenes y las mujeres. Se los tomaron todos, a medida que son jóvenes, para hacer esclavos de ellos. shivering. It's the harm sitting by the fire on a cold evening. You ain't sitting by it? Well, but I'm fleshy. You're just a skinny stick. Can I answer my question? You don't like being a prisoner, Manny. I might have to fight those old men. I might have to kill some of them. I'd just as soon not get friendly. Why would you want to kill them? They ain't bad. They sent their women to feed us. We haven't been fed this good since San Saba. Even Salazar ain't so bad. I've met plenty of worse Mexicans. Worse whites, too. I didn't say he was so bad. But I won't be a prisoner much longer, Maddie. I might have to escape. I can't be free, I may as well be dead. See San Lazaro, Captain. How much further is it? We'll be there tonight, Mr. Wallace. You are Captain Salazar? That's the sort of I am Major Lagos. Why are these men not tied? I've walked a long way with these men. Together we have crossed the Ornada del Muerto. They're not tied because they know that I'll shoot them if they try to escape. They would be easier to hit if they were tied. They are prisoners. Prisoners should be tied. Time first. And then tie the one who attacked the general. Which is he? Corporal Call. Stand up. Perhaps you should chain them, too, Major. You know Texans are very wild. Where's the rest of your troop, Captain? Dead. The Apaches followed us into the Ornada. They killed some, a bear killed some. The rest starved to death. But you had the horses when you left Santa Fe. Where are the horses? Some died, some were stolen. I suggest you go home, Captain. Your commanding officer will want to know why you lost most of your men and all of your horses. I am told you were well provisioned. No one should have starved. Gomez killed General Demacio. He killed Colonel Cobb. Gomez is the reason we lost our horses and our men. No officer in the Mexican army should be bitten by a savage, Captain. Monday, perhaps, they will let me go after these Gomez. When I catch him, I'll put a hook through his neck and hang him in the plaza in Santa Fe. You won't catch him.
there a blacksmith in the village? No. Because if there were, I would chain this man now. We are in the hurry. We can chain him in San Lazaro. Major, I have no horses. Do you expect me to walk back to Santa Fe? I am a captain in the Mexican army. Yes, a disgraced captain. You walked here, you walked back. I'm almost out of ammunition. If you send us back with no horses and no bullets, Gomez will kill all of us. Ask that priest for a prayer. If he's a good priest, his prayers might be better than bullets and horses. I'd rather have bullets and horses. Goodbye, Captain. If I was you, I'd travel at night. Stay close to the river. That way, you might make it. Adios, Captain. You ain't such a bad fella. I hope you get home alive. Llévenos para allá. Vámonos. One of them soldiers told me the Major's French. Why would a Frenchie fight with the Mexicans? Money. I mostly fought for sport, but plenty do it for the pay. I wouldn't. Take the pay, but I got other reasons for fighting. What other reasons? Can't you hear Woodrow? I asked you what other reasons. Woodrow don't know why he likes to fight. You don't know why he hit that general and got himself whipped raw. My shad didn't know why he wandered. He was just a wandering man. That Woodrow, he's a fighter. Gentlemen, you are filthy. You need a bath. A fine ceremony awaits you in San Lazaro. If you bathe in the river, perhaps you'll be presentable when we reach our destination. Untie them. What kind of a ceremony would that be, Major? I will let that be a surprise. Strip, gentlemen. Your bath awaits. I'm tired of stinking. I'm going first. Nobody minds. Hurry up, gentlemen. The lady has set you an example. Sargento, desentrenen. Let's 
Sandstorm must have blown them into my boots. Yeah, much obliged. Them sandbirds are hard to see. Bring that over here. They put us in here with the dead. Something wrong, monsieur. Where is he skeletons, Major? One of them just brought me my boots. They are in skeletons, Monsieur Wallace. They are leopards. San Lazaro is a leopard colony. Good Lord, so that's it. I, I seen a leopard once. It was in New Orleans. 
That one didn't have no hands at all. I reckon I'll just stay barefoot for a while. Some of that leprosy might have gone on my boots. Well, what are they, Bill? Are they dead or alive? Well, the one I seen looked somewhere in between. Ah. Ah. His wives are fatter than buffalo hunts. They got a firing squad. They're gonna shoot us. They ain't gonna shoot us. This here's just a show of some kind for that fat Mexican. There's a priest, too. They don't need a priest in a firing squad if this is just a show. Last, the moment for our ceremony arrives. You are all guilty of attempting to overthrow the lawful government of New Mexico. By the normal laws of war, you would all be shot. But the authorities have decided to be merciful. Merciful how? Some will live and some will die. The woman we will spare. But you soldiers must pay the consequences of your actions. We started from Texas with more than 100 men. Now we're down to seven. I'd call that punishment. I don't know what you'd call it. That is but the fortunes of war, Monsieur Wallace. In the jar, there are white beans and black beans. You will each draw a bean. The man who draw white beans will live. The man who draw black beans will die. We have a priest, as you can see, and we have a firing squad. So, gentlemen, who will be the first to draw a bean? Good, our first volunteer. You are brave enough to start, monsieur. Your courage has been rewarded. You will live. Step aside, please. We need another volunteer.
Well, would you want to go on and draw? Woodrow went first. Maybe I'll go last. Sure. You must choose. Come. Be brave like your comrades. you to go first. Sing over me, Maddie. Oh, I will. Sure, I will. You was a true friend of my shadow. I've seen many a man die with his eyes wide open, Major. I expect I can do the same. As you wish, Monsieur. water on the trip home, boys. You're gonna have a lot of dry country to cross.
Lord, did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. I ain't ever heard singing like that before, Major. Who is that woman? That's Lady Carey. She's English. She's a prisoner of war like yourselves. Take us a week if we travel light. Well, I bet we're a long ways from home yet. Hell, it's windy enough we could blow back to Austin. We need weapons. None of us would make it without weapons. Gentlemen, I have an invitation for you. Lady Carrie would like to ask you to tea. She's inviting us to what? Tea. And Miss Roberts, she knows you've traveled a long way. She thought you might appreciate a hot bath. Why, well, I would. I would. I've mainly just been bathing in the river, and the river gets so cold. Then come along with me. Now, it's tea we're supposed to be sipping? <laughs> yes. Lady Carrie is English, and the English serve tea every day at this hour. It's like a small meal. You gentlemen come along in about half an hour. Follow me. Hurry now. If you don't, Willie will eat all the cucumber sandwiches. Willie. <laughs> Are you Texans? I am a Scot. This is William, the Viscount Mount Stewart. You may call him Willie. Now, if you're a Scot, you're a far piece from home. That's why Mother wants to see you. She wants you to take us home. Follow me. Well, now, what will we ride? See, our horses got stolen a long while back. Oh, my mother has horses. There's a stable in back of the Leprosarium. Uh, the what? The Leprosarium. Aren't you lepers? <laughs> now, Willie, don't be pointing that gun at our guests. That would be quite impolite. Of course, I've been impolite, too. I failed to introduce myself. I'm Emerald. Lady Carrie will see you now. Your father was a king. Willie, the polite thing would be for you to let our guests have a go at the sandwiches first. I'm Lucinda Carey. Welcome to San Lazaro. I'm Augustus McRae. Why, Willie, he's Scott, like us. And this here is a Woodrow call, Wesley Buttons, and Long Bill Coleman. William Coleman. There's lots of food, gentlemen. You may wish to wash first before you eat. Well, ma'am, if there's a grub, I'm for eating first and washing later. Very well. Please sit down. Much obliged. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am.
Why, Maddie, is that you? Of course it's me, Gussie. Don't you recognize me? Why, yes, ma'am. Willie? Oh, you'll have to excuse us, gentlemen. When we're hungry, we have no manners at all. I expect it's the wind. It blows, don't it? Mama caught leprosy in her plantation in the islands. I didn't catch it, and neither did Emily. Poor luck. I was the only one afflicted. Well, Papa might have had it, but we don't know because the Mexican shot him first. That's when we were made prisoners of war. Now, Willie, our guests have traveled a long way and lost many friends themselves. We needn't burden them with our misfortunes. I, I lost my shed, too. It was a stray bullet. The Mexican government has agreed to release us, but what they won't do is provide us with an escort. We would hope you gentlemen would escort us as far as Austin. <laughs> but let's finish our sandwiches first. It's very impolite to discuss business when one's guests are enjoying their food. Ma'am, if you have a plan for leaving, then I'm for talking right now. No cause for alarm, gentlemen. That's Elphinstone. He's Willie's boa. Only he's too big for me. Mama and Emerald play with him now. My father has paid these greedy generals a handsome sum for our release. And we would like to travel as soon as possible. So, what do you think of my proposal? Ma'am, we'd be pleased to take you. But it's a far piece, and we've no mounts and no gear. Fortunately, we carries on to Paul. I'll send you to town with enough gold to equip us properly. Don't skimp, either. We have a tent large enough for ourselves and Miss Roberts, but I'm afraid you men will have to sleep out. Ma'am, we don't know how to sleep anywhere else but out. If we get some slickers and some blankets, we'll be cozy enough. So when might we leave? Tomorrow, if you can equip us today. Emerald will provide you with money and mounts for your trip to town. Well, shall we eat? Does that mean? Well, it certainly is, Maddie. Woodrow. Woodrow, what's your opinion? Well, of course it's you. It's a mirror. It don't show nobody but the person that looks in it. Now, do you think I'm pretty now that I've had a proper bath? Well, you're cleaner now, Maddie. You was always pretty. I think I'm prettier. Clean. I think I'm a bunch prettier. Clean. She rides off too far, that buffalo man's gonna get her. We're in his country now, and she don't know it. She will know it, I'll tell her. Willie boy. Ma'am, you oughtn't ride off too far. We're in Comanche country. <laughs> I'm not a hen, Corporal. You needn't act like a rooster.
Ahu vet nume pu kuani ni nai vet to to move that way. No koku kohoma. Tamakuma ahi ves. Udu sa guhuma maguhi sai. Na na gufkani yaki na he to he who kui. Fight this. It's a lurchy way to travel, if you ask me. Why is she stopping just to paint a hill? You can't rush a woman like that, Woodrow. It's a long ways to Austin. We ain't near through Comanche country. Back to where it's wild again. Yes. It is wild, isn't it? It's like a smell. I smelled it in Africa. And I smell it here. It means we have to be careful now. On the contrary, Kupukul. It means we have to be wild. Like the wild men. Are you wild enough, Kupukul? I have a feeling you are. I guess we'll see. Colors. See the colors? No. These are bigger. The pistol. The beautiful pistol. This isn't working. Give me the ball. Think of that, huh? Look at that. You like that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Told you the gypsy glass would do it.
hai bo sa pe hi sa ku ka pin ka we ha he ya ya we ha tu na na tessa pa hi tu ai ten a tessa tony pizza udumik tai voi ta o ta o do mai tai voi then a puzza a tu tua avega u su i voi ta te na ne tu ha pe ka tai voi pe ku sa na ki u ka ton si we mi ki tu e u u ka to we na Smell something. The wild men are here, my lady. Yes, they are. It's interesting singing, isn't it? I wonder what it means. It means death. It means they want our hair. But they may want it, but they can't have it. Corporal Cool, I will need my horse. We can't whip them. I don't think we can outrun them, ma'am. <laughs> no, we won't be running. Gentlemen, none of you may look at me now. Well, but why not, ma'am? Because I intend to disrobe. Matilda, will you carry my clothes? I shall want them, of course, once I've dispersed these savages. Cinch my horse carefully, Corporal, so he won't jump. I've got to be a regular lady godiver this morning. I don't want any trouble from that black beast. Emerald, will you bring me my fine snake, Elphinstone? Give me Elphinstone. I'm in rather good voice today. I intend to sing my best arias. I expect I can yell almost as loud as a Comanche. Emerald, can you take my husband's fine sword and flourish it aloft? Gladly, my lady. All right, then. Let's put them to rout. One day, a dark woman with a sword will come on a white mule. When the woman comes on the white mule, it will be the end of the time of the Comanche people. There will be wars and pestilence, and our people will perish. And you, my son, must not turn your back to the woman on the white mule. 
Your death will come only when your great hump is pierced. Do not turn your back on her. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Signor Berry and tell him his arias were not appreciated by the wild Comanche. She saved us, we drove her. He didn't kill us. No, but we didn't kill him either. We should have. You're right. Reckon he'll be back. If he does come back, he won't find me. Why not, Bill? If I ever get to town, I aim to take up carpentry and sleep in a bed. That's why not. I've had enough of this sleeping outside. Rangering's a rare sport, but it ain't quite safe. Yeah, why's he backing his horse like that? I don't know, Woodrow. You're so curious, why don't you go and ask him? I'll look down there and see you sometime. All right, hop in. You've been a fine companion, Miss Roberts. I want you to have this. To remind you that you are a lady as well. Why, thank you, ma'am. I never knew what a real lady was. I just about give up on being pretty. Until I met you. Will you visit us, Corporal Cole? Oh, I expect I might. I'd like you to have this. What's this for? It's to remind you to be wild, Corporal. When wildness is required. Those wild ranger boys. I guess they didn't starve after all. <laughs> well, I hear they didn't capture Santa Fe neither. Captured? 
We didn't even see it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Well, better be off on my errands, honey. Glad you boys made it back. Just back. Mm. Oh, Mr. McCray. Howdy, Miss Clara. I got here just as fast as I could. Too fast for your friend Corporal Call. He looks fair tuckered out. I wouldn't be surprised if he fainted. I never yet fainted. And I ain't tuckered out. <laughs> I believe Mr. McCray came in here thinking he was gonna kiss me. Was that your notion, sir? Well, ma'am, when I was leaving... Oh, that, yes. <laughs> I don't put much stock in goodbye kisses. Besides, you boys have been gone such a long spell, I could be married by now, for all you know. I told you she wouldn't wait. You didn't. Are you married? All I said was I could be married now. As it happens, I just ain't met the right feller yet. And I guess you won't now that I'm back. I'll give any feller that interferes a licking he'll never forget. <laughs> He's brash, ain't he, Corporal? What do you think? Should I kiss him? Should you what? Kiss him. Why are you asking him? There ain't none of his look at oh, Hush. One his opinion. Well, he wrote all night. You're all he talked about for 2,000 miles. See, Corporal Call's got sense. If he hadn't spoke up for you, I doubt I'd have kissed you for a whole month. Thank you.